<laughs> Hello, and welcome to the RC Lawn Chair Pilots podcast. I Hi. am Derek. Hello. And this is... I'm Steven. Uh, welcome. How are you guys doing? Thank you for joining us. You got a lot of sun today. I was out riding horses. It was good times, So, yeah. but I'm tired, so... <laughs> Woo! And then I was running late... Uh, cause it's July 24th today, which is a Utah holiday and mm. we're Utah. So I was having I a actually, barbecue. Oh, how dare you? Oh, yeah, it, was it, it was at my wife's family's. Oh, so. well, I completely forgot it was the 24th until like two hours ago. Ah. Yeah. So, and our usual festivities have been canceled for the year cause COVID it sucks. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. All right. Well, let's jump into this. Yeah, let's get going. So. <laughs> Start off with the the crazy stuff. Yeah. What's okay, going on? So, latest news from me. Um, found out I broke the antenna on my RX six R. Uh huh. The one that was I had in my discus launch glider. Yeah. Um, it, That's why you were losing yeah, telemetry every time it would go a certain direction. Yeah. Well, not just if it got a certain distance away, it would yeah. drop that RSSI signal. Ah. Um. So found out what had happened is the antenna pulled out of the connector that plugs it on to the receiver. Uh-huh. Um, and it had been that way, I think, for a couple flights, like a couple outings. Yeah. Probably was because you, you kept getting that. Yeah. So like so. overall, a couple hours of it being out. Um, I ordered new antennas and I got a couple extras just to like make sure if something goes wrong, I can replace it immediately again. Um, but I plugged it in, I could connect it to my radio, and within like two feet of the receiver and the radio, still had terrible signal. Mm. So I thought, now the the antennas I got are a thinner gauge. Like okay. the, the outside is thinner than the original stock ones. Okay. So I emailed the loft and told them what was up, and they're like, okay, those are the right antennas. They will work. So, but then they asked me how long the antenna had been broken and how long I'd been using that way. Oh. And I said maybe a few hours. And they said that might have fried the receiver. receiver. Oh, really? Yeah. Putting too much stress on it. I or guess. Or something. something. Weird. Huh. So, but that's okay. I've, at, at the very least, I've hot glued all the rest of my antennas in place. So hopefully the, the other ones don't pull out, <laughs> and a dab of hot glue weighs nothing, so it's not a big deal. Yeah, you're not adding a lot of weight to that. So. But I'll talk about it in a bit. Free Sky has new receivers coming out that I'm going to. That's okay. why I'm not buying new receivers right now. Because you're looking. They're pulling in new ones, and once Aloft has them in stock in the next month, you're gonna get. Some I'm gonna ones. buy a whole bunch. All right, because cool. they're they're awesome. All right, so what about you? What's what's new? So I can't remember if I talked about it last time. I don't think I did. Um, did I fix my Elf last time? So we we went flying, yeah. Cause yeah, we we because it was fixed, and then no, we, it was because you fixed it with the balsa woods. Stick. Yeah. Did we talk about that? I don't remember. I don't think we did. Well, so let's cover it anyway. So I, that's why I put it on here because I don't remember covering it here. So uh, you, we told you that I broke the nose off, like literally broke the nose off of my uh, elf glider, yep, uh, distance launch glider, and it. So I went and got some some balsa wood that was close, and then I shaved it down, and then I, I actually keyed it because the one side was um, bezeled or Bev- tapered. Had tapered. Tapered. Yeah, tapered it was tapered. Word. That's the word I was looking for, tapered. And so I fit – it was only uh, three-quarters of an inch, not not even a full inch that I put in there. Mm. And got it – it was like a nice, perfect fit glued it all up, got it all in there, then we wrapped it with some carbon fiber and glued it some more. Yeah. Man, that thing was like a champ, working awesome. Like it was like it was great. And we went out and flew it. Um in fact we flew it that next Monday. Yeah. Afterwards. The uh, day episode three came out. Yep. And got some good flights. And then the next day I went and flew it again. I got about 30, 40 minutes of flight. And the wind I, I the only thing I can think of it was a cross between me overcompensating with what the wind had done and mm. it just slammed it into the ground and sheared the servo gears. Yeah. So that's sad. Um 
I got I got that project <laughs> coming up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then uh, let's see. That was that was like that's b- basically the news that I've on those. Um, but that takes me right into the product. So okay. it sheared it, <laughs> and you, Derek, did good job. Um, I know where is everything is. Servocity.com. Yeah. And the worst part about this, this this servo replacement, it was only two ninety nine. Yeah. This was the last one in stock. I wanted to buy three of them. Oh no. Shipping cost me eight dollars. Oh no. Well, seven dollars. So I could have bought a brand new one. But I, I'm okay because this is, gives me an experience because when I upgrade to, say, $30 servos, you're going to replace I'm going to replace them with $3 parts instead of another 30 The servos I bought were $12 servos. Yeah. So, like, not a big deal. This gives me a chance to learn on the servo. And if I don't fix it, I will buy some probably nicer servos. Yeah, well, and you're only out a really cheap servo. Yes, exactly. So, And it's only a few dollars, and even with the shipping and the servo parts, it's still less expensive than if I bought the more expensive version of those servos. Mm, yeah. So I'm still saving money, especially if I get it working. Yeah. Now, if I don't get it working, then I have to buy another servo, and that sucks. But I chopped that, exper- that money up to education. Yeah. And that's what I'm going to put that under is education, learning how to replace the servo parts and, and whatnot. So, um, very nice. I put in the notes that it's on its way, but it came, I like, I drove on my way home from the barbecue. I stopped and got the mail and it was in there. <laughs> so this, I just got it today. I'll, I'll, put, I'll show this on the video so you guys can see it. But that was the last one they had in stock of that size. And this is the one for my HS40 nano. Mm-hmm. Uh, economy yeah. nano servo the high tech servo yeah i so. wonder if high tech is a china company or if it's american i don't know it's because I, I could see that being because a lot of companies that like source out of the united states their their stock is just decimated right now because yeah. shipping is a nightmare yep well, that's fun. I'm glad you got the parts you needed. So that's my that's the products right now that I'm using. I mean, I wonder, I, I wonder if one of our local shops would have them. I, I think um, v- uh, Vortex does. Has the gear replacements? Yes. Okay. Uh, but I don't know if they have this size. Um, I would think since you bought them at West Valley Hobbies that they would also have the replacement gears. They they probably do. But I've seen replacement parts for servos at Vortex. Mm, so okay. I know they do replacement parts. Like, if they have them, uh, I, I don't know if they would have this specific one because I bought all of that they had from West Valley uh-huh. of the servos I had uh, that they had. So um, I might do a trip next week over to Vortex and just see what servos they do have of that size. Yeah, for sure. And um, But right now, um, that's on my – that's that, those are the new products that I have. Like, that's really it. Like, I didn't get anything new. Well, kind of, but I'll talk about that thing a little <laughs> bit later. All right. Okay, so products that I'm using slash new. Um, my Weller soldering station. Uh, is, which is pretty sweet looking. For the video, it's right here. It's the cheap $40 one that you can get at your local hardware store or on Amazon. It is, will do up to 900 degrees. It's 5 to 40 watts. It's got an adjustable thing on there, which nice. is really nice. I usually run it little bit higher than halfway so maybe about 30 watts and i find that works great doesn't overheat too much um so i've been using that to replace all of the battery connectors oh yeah you've got a bunch of those too so i went from what used to be dean's connectors the t-shaped with the red plug to xt60s and xt30s i've been just flying through replacing those which has been awesome that gives you a chance to work on your soldering skills too. Yeah, I'm actually getting pretty good at it. So <laughs> that's you? nice. I, I, I'll, I'll I'll look at those solders and They're, let you know. They look really nice. <laughs> They're covered in shrink wrap, so no one can tell. Um, <laughs> so they are good. <laughs> yeah. So the other thing that I just got today, um, so I have all the equipment I need to make my own servo extensions. Nice. So if I if the wire on the servo is not long enough to reach my receiver, I put in an extension of like you can go buy extensions that range from one inch up to three I, feet long. I got, I got when I picked up the servos, I got some um, extension wire for, I got two different types mm-hmm. and they were three feet. I think I grabbed yeah. three feet ones. Yeah. So, so I have, I have enough connectors to make 20 connect, 
20 servo plugs, male and female. Oh, nice. So a total of 40. And then I have five yards of 26 gauge servo wire and five yards of 22 gauge. Oh. So those are the yeah, two the, gauges you use. Yeah. And now to k- put the pl- the little actual connectors that go inside the little black bits that make the connection. Sorry. To put those on, you have to either be very good with needle nose pliers or you need a pair of servo crimps. Yes. And these came in today. They're really nice. They ratchet into position. And then spring open. Yeah, so you can put, so you can. So I can loosely hold the pin in place. Yeah, you can put the pin in there, hold it, and crimp it down so it's got it. Put the wire in, and then then snap it, and and finish crimping it. Which is nice because I can now make servo extensions that are exactly the length I need instead of like what I just did on my EF16, which is they were too long, so I zip tied them into a little bundle. Yeah. Which is super annoying. So now that I have these, I'm going to take those longer extensions that I'll talk about in a bit and replace them with exact length. Yeah, I may come and borrow that because I have some crimpers uh, that are they're, they don't have the lock the locking mechanism. So I have to hold it in, put it in, and then put the it's it's a three handed <sighs> job. Yeah, well, I only have two hands. Yeah. So, um, but it is. Um, I mean, it's working kind of. It's yeah. just, it's just, it takes a little more talent. Yeah, that I don't have. So, so other products that so I mentioned the other receivers that Free Skies put has uh-huh. come out with. They released them a couple months ago. They're just now getting into stores. They're okay. a little slow on production after they make an announcement. They, but they are the art. They are called the Archer series. What's really nice is they have, they have increased range, and reduced latency. Nice. All of them are in a little plastic housing, so they weigh a little bit more, but okay. they're stu- still super small. Um, they have what's called over-the-air updates. So rather than having to plug your receiver into your radio and run the update that way, yeah, you just connect to it like you would for flying and tell it to run and, and then run, then run the update. update. Yeah, so over-the-air stuff is awesome. Yeah. I, that, I'm, I'm kind of surprised it took them, like the RC World, this long to do over the air for even the receivers yeah uh because like like our cell phones have been doing over the air updates for years <laughs> right um so yeah, but that's but, awesome but with rc receivers it's all about getting as much as you can into a tiny little tiny that little board true. like smaller is better yeah and then the other thing they just announced this last week they have their own line of servos now really they are all metal gear Metal housing servos. So are they a little bit heavier then? They're a little bit heavier. I think the lightest one is around 20 grams. That's too heavy for my... Yeah, it's too heavy for anything that you're doing. But, like, I could put that in some of my my big planes. Yeah, but the metal, that would be... I I could put some of those in my cars that I'm looking at Mm -hmm. upgrading. Yeah, and they have ones that are designed to... They're called wing servos. So they're they're very thin and flat. And then rather rather than having the mounting holes in the typical location in line with the top they're turned 90 degrees and lined up with a one of the big flat faces so you mount it on that way oh so it makes it really nice if you're putting it inside a glider wing that's yeah. really thin and you're not bulking it up that's very so awesome those are coming out i'm super excited to put get some of those and try them yeah that'll be that'll be um, very awesome so exciting stuff coming down the works from free sky okay so Latest do we have any, anything else i don't think so I think that's pretty much. It. I, I guess I could. Act, no. Uh, you want to talk about other products? Yeah. So yeah, do uh, it. let me talk about this one. I was going to throw it in something else, but yeah. so um, I saw a special on some drones. Mm-hmm. And quadcopters. Quadcopters. Yeah. Just so we're clear. Yeah. And um, this, I'm going to show it there. It's a DJI mock-up. It weighs uh, here. Lift that up. It weighs almost nothing. Da, 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 That's da, got da. the battery in it and everything. Oh, sweet! So it unfolds. It's an unfolding one. Those of you who are familiar with the DJI style folding, this one is. Now this thing claims it's indestructible. It's not. It feels so light. But it is super, super light. But the cool thing is, it's got some intelligence. Yeah. So it'll hover like it, the antennas don't even do anything. Oh, that what? They're this just for, this they're just literally for is just this is this is <laughs> just to make it look like a DJI. Yes, this is a super super inexpensive um, drone. Um, they were about fifty dollars. 
That's not bad. Which, which for the other drones I have of similar make, is a better quality, I think. However, mm. I don't think I can fix these. No. No, something breaks on this. The whole thing's. I. That's what scrapped. I think. But I have I have crashed it, and all it did was fold in the arm. That's good. So I hit something that I was I thought I was further away, and it just folded the arm in. Yeah. Well, there's not a whole lot holding the arm out. You can feel there's a small little yeah dent that it r- snaps into, but it's and it's pretty light. They do come with blade protection, Proper so heads. you can um, fly it indoors. Okay. Uh, now it is a it's a closer to like an eight inch uh, drone, uh, but it's still under the two hundred and fifty grams of um, weight, so it doesn't require the license registration yeah, that you do nice. for the heavier drones. You still have the standard um, restrictions, just like all flying, oh, yeah. but. Motor center to motor center on the diagonal is seven and three quarter inches. Like I said, eight inches. <laughs> yeah. no, I just I have a ruler here. I wanted to measure it. So, um, but with the so it flies, it will. It's got a hover mode. So when the nice thing is, it's just like some of the smarter drones. When you when I when I put it up at a level, it will hover at that level. So and it's got so a can, it's got a gyro in it. Yeah, so I can fly it around and stuff like that. It has been actually pretty fun to fly. I've flown it a couple times. Um, I mostly got it so my son could fly it, and he hasn't really wanted to fly it too much. Well, that's because your real DJI is so much cooler. It really, it really is. But for fifty dollars, and you know, I never showed this. Let me let me show this real quick. It's got a nice cams with the carrying case. I don't know how many more they have because they did say that it was a limited run. Um, I got five of them. Do, oh, I noticed there's a camera on it. Does the camera work? How does yes. how does the camera work? Like, <sighs> through, is there internal memory that you plug into? No, through your phone. So it's you, got an app. You connect to it on your phone. Yeah. Okay. So now I've got like 18 different drone apps because every drone I've ever purchased pretty much has its own app. It's a good thing your phone has a billion gigs of memory. It, it does now, but it didn't originally. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that has been pretty fun. Uh but I, like I said, my son hasn't. I, I just need to take him out and fly with him more with it, and I think he'll start to like it because mm, it, yeah. it's. I would say he's eight, almost nine, and I would say um, if your kids have an interest, this is a great to get out of the little tiny four-inch ones or three-inch ones and moving into the five-inch ones and the like. This one, the eight-inch one. Like jumping into those, but still staying under that 250 gram weight limit. Yeah. Well, and it looks like, so that thing's spinning three inch props. Uh huh. So it's a good sized brushed motors. Yeah. But it, I mean, it flies. For $50, I would say my, it's, I would say it's better than my $70 um, hobby one. Now, the nice thing about my $70, yeah, $70 hobby one is anything break, I can rebuild that basically from scratch. Yeah. That's always a nice thing. That is one nice thing. This thing, I, I have I, like I ran into a couple things. It it took it really well. It's super super light, so like it doesn't ever reach terminal velocity when it's falling because well, it's so light. Terminal velocity for it is really slow. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, so I wanted to share that um, that I got those. Nice. And those those like it, I haven't opened the other ones yet. I'm trying to figure out what exactly I'm going to do with them. I might do gifts Get or. Away. Something like if we can get, <laughs> if we can get maybe like that whisper, maybe I'm not going to say it out loud, but so latest outing outings, Derek, what do we, what, what? So here in Utah, we, so we went out uh-huh. a week and a half ago now, Monday, the when episode three released, we went flying here in Utah. There is a world-class slope soaring place yep. uh, by Draper, Utah, between Draper and Lehigh called the point of the mountain. There's a north slope and a south slope. Depending on, and if there's wind, it's going to be coming from one of those two directions. Yeah. And you are guaranteed to be able to fly. Like, so we went out to the north slope because we had a north wind coming from the north. Yep. And we got out there, and there was two guys on par or on hang gli- or paragliders. Paragliders. They were just getting out. Yep. By the time we left, there was what 20, 30 guys up yeah, in there. Yeah, twenty to thirty. And the cool thing is, is so it's there's, it's on the 
on a, a foothill of a mountain, kind of. So the it goes from the bottom of the valley up onto this bench. That's where you fly from. But then the mountain keeps going up behind you, and guys will start out on that bench, and then they'll fly their paragliders and their hang gliders up to the top of the mountain, and then just sit there and circle in the in the lifting air. Yeah. And they'll be up there for hours. Yeah, we were out there for what an hour and a half. Yeah, about between walking and everything. Hour and a half, two hours. Yeah, almost. yeah, close close to two hours, and um, they were up there the whole time. Yeah, but we also had some good flying time. Your oh, yeah. first one. So my first one, I actually went back and watched the video. It was a minute. So I I took my uh, mini DLG. As soon as we got out there, whipped it out over to the hill, and I it immediately just took off and floated, and I was riding that air for, it was it was a minute and 20 seconds. I was so pleased and absolutely terrified. Yeah. Most nerve-wracking flight <laughs> I've ever had, because it's sitting there, and it's it's bouncing and jittering on the on the air that's coming over the hillside. Yeah. And I it was everything I could do to just keep from... Me tanking it into the ground. Yeah, you did a like that first flight. You did a great job. I'm working on editing the videos of. So I got the video out for the rebuild of that glider. I'm working on the video for the maidens, and then I'll be working on the video for the point of the mountain flight. Yeah, I released my maiden flights for my elf um, right around sometime last week. Yeah, I think it was right around the time last episode released. Yeah, it was. And I have my next flight and that flight. I still need to edit those. Mm -hmm. And I have the crash flight. Ah, yep. I have that crash. I have. The, I haven't watched that video yet, <laughs> but I have that on video. So yeah. So that first flight, I got the minute and twenty. Every subsequent flight, it was. It ranged from twenty to forty-ish seconds, depending on how nervous I got and how well I threw it into the lifting wind. And as the night went on, the lifting wind got worse and worse. And yeah, the flights got shorter and shorter. Yeah, uh, for you. For me, You're... They, they didn't change yeah. much for me. I mean, granted, I, I'll, I'll jump in here real quick before yeah. because no, we I went ahead. with him. Uh, my longest flight was like forty five, forty six seconds. Yes, which, which was impressive. Which, which was a really good flight. Um, I am a lot more reckless than Derek is. He did a lot of loops. Well, straight I, off the bat, part of that was because we didn't have my tail fin the elevator trimmed right. That yeah. was part of the problem. And I think your CG is off. Um, what CG? Center of gravity. Oh yes, uh, yes, we do believe our my center of gravity is. So once you're finished rebuilding your servo and everything, we'll we really we need to that. sit down and make sure that's yeah. I think spot on. I think I need to put a uh, a little bit of weight on the tail. But really? I, I think you need nose weight. I think my nose is too heavy. We'll find out. But oh, I didn't put we'll that in the news it. because I actually broke my tail connector, like the tail fin. Mm -hmm. Where the tail uh, fin slots into, slots the into it, that yeah. is broken. So oh, I'm going to be back over here um, stealing more of Derek's um, carbon fiber carbon filament. fiber filament. To it's a good get... thing I have so much of that. Yeah, that stuff's going to last a decade. Yep. Even with me breaking stuff well, all and the it's time. Super cheap. So. <laughs> so anyway, um, what was your other latest outing you did? So I have a buddy at work. He used to fly. Um, it's called Formula One Air Racing. Okay. I've heard of that. He used I... to fly that professionally. Oh. RC, RC Formula One Racing. Okay. Yeah. And it's, it's basically just a plane that's cooking out over 100 miles an hour, and it's pylon racing out and back and out and back and out and back. He used to do that professionally. He also used to run. There's fireworks going off because you do fireworks today in Utah. Yeah. So you might hear that in the background. Um, but he used to also run a distributorship for three hobby stores out in California. Okay, cool. So he was deep in the hobby, and he has a whole bunch of planes, and he's been handing them down to me. That's how I got the the helicopter that you can see me pointing at in the video. That's how I got the EF-16 that I've been building, and it's just been fun. But he also ha picked up a plane that is called the Rage RC Super Cub 750. Okay, so I learned something new. There is a company here in Utah that manufactures overseas, of course, but manufactures and then distributes RC cars, trucks, planes, boats, all that stuff. Oh, that's very cool. They're br so they are called Hobby. Hold on. 
I don't remember what it's called. You didn't put it in the notes. I didn't. I should have. I'm going to look it up real quick. <laughs> company is called Hobby Recreation Products. Okay. You can go. You can either type in RageRC.com and it'll take you there, or you can type in Hobby Recreation products.com and it'll take you to their site but all all their airplanes are park flyer or mark micro sized so like this this super cub that i that he has is uh-huh. a 750 size so the wingspan is 750 millimeters oh okay so it's pretty small yeah but it's it's built with a flying assist mode so he got he got his ready to fly so it comes with transmitter battery everything okay and on the transmitter, there's a, a three-position switch where it has full assist. So as you're flying, it'll limit how you t- how much you can bank and go up and down and stuff. So it's very gentle flying. But it'll also, if you let go of the sticks, it'll keep you tracking straight. Perfectly level despite the wind. It'll do everything Whoa. it can to track straight. So it's like my, it's like my DJI mm-hmm. drone. Yeah. And then if you switch it into partial assist, then it gives you a little more turn authority but still keeps you tracking straight, and then you can turn assist off all the way. And just be, you yeah. know, crazy. Mm-hmm. This particular plane is currently out of stock, um, but it's like 120 bucks. That's not too bad. No. They I, have a 1.1 meter airplane that they're selling. I think it's 150 now bucks. Now, that one, is that one too big to fly at the park? No. That one's still small enough? Yeah, still small enough. Because I've, I've been thinking about um, what my next project is going to be. So... Um, and and I'm not quite sure what path I'm going to go. And that's actually... Well, hold on. So, really quick. That airplane, he brought it into work. Oh. And we've been meaning to fly it on our lunch, but the wind has been too much. Ah. Uh, because f- he, he's been having fun listening to me tell all the stories of everything I've been doing. <laughs> and he wants to get it back into it so bad. But he's got neuropathy in his fingers, so he's nervous. Uh. But this will be a perfect plane for him because he can put it in full assist mode throttle it up it'll take itself off nice and level and then he can just tootle it around the parking Play lot or that'll be fine and then to th- land he just lines it up throttles down and then just make sure it'll keep it tracking straight he just or keep it tracking level he just lands it where he wants it so it'll, it's going to be great for getting him back in i'm super excited that that'll be actually really cool yeah Okay, what were you going to say? Well, and that, not like I said, that 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 down takes us into different projects. So I've been trying to decide what project. I could say I'm going to get the Elf back up, right? I want that DLG. I want to throw it some more. I've had a ton of fun flying the DLG. I have, I have very much enjoyed that. But awesome. something we didn't talk about yet, and I'm going to throw it in here because I'm going to say it's a project. All right. We got my transmitter receiver working That's right. I've with been my. I need to ask you about this. With my RoboMaster. Yes. Now, DJI I, RoboMaster. I have not done any more than what you and I did. Okay. Okay. I figured, but, <laughs> but I've been meaning to. But I got. We got. So we got where I could. It, basically, it was using it as a stylistic. Like it thought it was like a drone, is the best way I can. Or a four a quad a quad. Well, so let's start out with what the ro- how the RoboMaster controls. Okay, so the RoboMaster is a um, a car, a robot car that has a turret on it, and the controls are all on your cell phone. Mm-hmm. It's a it's an app that connects to it. It's a really really smart app. Now the RoboMaster is specifically designed for learning. There's a whole bunch of extra connections that are available inside of it. The app lets you. Fully, like you could pull program this thing to run a course all by itself. Yeah. So it has. Because it's designed to do that. It has what you could consider a flight controller, but obviously it's it's an auto, it has an autopilot that you can program. Yes, yes. So I can program it and then hit go and it will run that program. Yeah. And and then there's targets and other things that you can set up. So you could set up a whole track, put it out there and say, go count from one to five and then end on the heart and and it would track it do it in sequence and end on the heart like you could program it to do that and it would run it autonomously that's awesome and you could change the course around and 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 everything and and that's what it's designed to do well part of that is you can add extra hardware to it you can change out hardware in fact they just released a new version of it that is a claw instead of um it shoots bbs or it shoots the water pellets or laser Oh. So the new one is a claw. Oh. Same That's chassis. Cool. Yeah, same chassis, but they you just took... replace the upper turret. Mm-hmm. 
And so you can – I don't know if they have just the – turret replacement but they changed that's all they did was they stayed with the same body chassis yeah. and then changed out the turret with the claw um, the kit mm. comes as a whole I don't know if they have parts to go back and forth with yours I'm okay. assuming they will eventually I would because think they would. that's what it's designed for but now the app when you open it up it shows both models on there and you have to pick which one you're running uh-huh nice but we took our free sky um, transmitter yep. and a uh, four channel um, receiver. Rec- receiver and plugged it into the S bus. And right off the bat, we started getting controls. Yeah, it was terrifying. It was so awesome. So now the way we set it up, we figured, so there's four, a motor for each wheel. Uh huh. We figured, okay, to make this run properly, we need to, we figured why not set it up like a quadcopter? Yeah. 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 So using the setup wizard that's in, um, the Free Sky Radios. The latest update. Well, it's it's in all of them. You just have to set it up on the computer. You just have to update to it. Yeah. Um, using that, we set it up as a quadcopter. It automatically mapped the throttle stick, the left, right, up, down, all, all the sticks. And then it mapped the switches for changing modes and all those yeah. things. So all we had to do was sit there and figure out what controls did what. And then move what controls we needed to yep. switch what sticks they were on. Yep. So we learned we separated because it had all of the switches, uh, all of the modes on one switch. I pulled all three of them off onto three separate switches and learned what each switch did. Yeah. So we had a engage like turn it on switch. We had That's a the arm switch. Ha- uh, uh, yeah, the arm switch. We had a a mode switch, which was like a fast slow mode switch, uh-huh. and that one usually would freak it out moving from one to the other mm. and then we, the, there was the last one, one there was one more mode switch that would change it between whether or not you could control oh, yeah. the yeah and then we had a turret, turret control switch yeah. that made it so either i was moving the turret and it would whatever whichever way the turret was facing that's the way it was just driving forward yeah i couldn't control how fast it was driving too much i had a little bit but not a lot but yeah. whichever way the turret was facing that's the way it was driving yeah. So the way in in the DJI program um, to set up the RoboMaster, you tell it, or that's where you can set up your controls and everything. So you just set up the basic controls in your radio, and then in the actual pro, um, controller program for DJI, that's where you tell it, okay, this these are the exact controls I want to do. That's what we need to do next. Yeah. And honestly, I think what we should do. Because, like we found with the throttle stick, if you don't set it perfectly, it sits there and tries to jitter one way or uh-huh. the other. I think we should move the throttle for forward and back to the right, from the left stick to the right stick. Oh, so that way, it when you let go, it automatically stops set, and centers. centers itself. Yeah, probably. Because, uh, like, that was some things I was thinking about. So that was that was something that we did that was pretty awesome to oh, do. Oh, that was so exciting because um, it it's set up. Like we found a, I found a thread post on the DJI forums where you can plug in a Futaba radio and it's good to go really fast. But everyone was commenting on it saying they had trouble getting their free sky radios to do it. So I was nervous, but we plugged it in and it ran immediately. Like I would say like with a little bit more tweaking and potentially some programming, um, I could get my, uh, free sky Tyrannus. Yeah transmitter working and getting it working like yeah 100 percent. and when we get that when that ends up working we'll make a post on the DJ, dji forums because oh, yeah we'll talk lots about of that. people will want we to will know definitely that. talk about that we'll, we'll put that all here we, we recorded it so we'll put together a video as well and we'll put that up on the channel yeah once we get that so putting back the elf putting the elf back together that's, yes that's on my plate and um looking at um Getting a speed controller to for my cars. Oh yes, okay. And uh, there, I I've thought about it, and I've kind of decide. So I got to just di- dive into the frames that I have and find out what kind of motors and start simple. So get a. Uh, it actually will be a very cheap speed controller that will do. Um, I think these are all brushed motors. Yes. And uh, then using a servo for the steering and yep. just start like really raw, really crude and and just just upgrade from there and just see what it does. You're going to want to make sure that you're 
well, I don't know if you're going to want to make sure of this, but I would recommend looking for an ESC that can handle forward and reverse. Not all of them can do that. Even car ones, not all of them can do that. I will I will have to make sure to look at that when I'm when I'm getting those. Cuz you can get brushed ESCs, those are a thing. Yeah. Just I'd recommend making sure that it can handle reverse as well cuz it's nice when you can back your RC car up. Like my my nitro <laughs> truck it doesn't have reverse. Yeah. So most of the ones that I looked at early on um did say they had reverse. Okay, perfect. Um but like I I'll, I'll when I when I finally buy one I will make sure yeah that that that's a thing um, and I'm still working on with the crimps that I have um, getting the five channel receivers that I have I've mm. got that I've got the uh, module to make it work I but wonder I, if I, I, should, I should be able to use that yeah I wonder because it has two the yeah. way these work is there's They're two, the same two sizes as, that it's on mine well there's an 18 to, so just so that people listening can see there's two jaw well, there's in the jaws. There's two sets of crimping spots. There's one for 18 to 22 gauge wire, and one for 24 to 30 gauge wire. So I wonder if the 24 to 30 gauge would be small enough to handle the crimps that you yeah, need to do. They would be. So. Because that's the same. That's my range is actually a smaller, tighter range for the ones I got. Oh yeah. Um, but they're it's in the same range and they work. Like once I got it in <laughs> and held oh, and then got the wire okay. in it, it crimped right up nicely okay so yeah it these just will... took me a while to get it in and facing right. the right way because that's the other thing is you got to put them in facing the right yeah. direction otherwise yeah so okay we'll get together then so that's Sweet. actually some beginner tips that we kind of threw in there but what's your um, project updates that you're working on i have started building the ef-16 <laughs> i'm so Kay. excited for this i want to go i am it. Absolutely terrified. I want you to fly it, actually. I will be the one flying it. Yeah, but so, I want to I get out there and watch you. That's... So when was... I don't remember when this made. It's a long since discontinued model. You've had it for a long time, huh? I've well, had, I haven't. you haven't had it for a long time, but... I got this from my buddy at work. He's had it for a long time, um, but it's called the... Fa the brand is Phase 3. Um, it is the EF-16 electric jet with ducted fan, brushless motor, and ESC. So it, it came... It's a kit. It's. I'll show it here in the video, and I've been posting pictures of it on our Instagram. So be sure you go and follow us. Yeah. This is where I'm at so far in the video. I have the main wings on, mm -hmm. and I have all the electronics installed. Oh yeah, you do. I can see the battery. The is that the bat? Yep. Is that the battery pack? That no. <laughs> so. Oh, that's your controller. Under yeah, that's the that's the speed controller. So underneath you can pull off the canopy, and underneath you find the battery compartment, as well as my receiver. And the plug for my the bat the battery lead. Um, inside, underneath there is so since it's a ducted fan, you need to be able to you have to have a hole in the front for air to be sucked valve. in. Yeah, an yep. intake spot. Yeah, and then it gets pumped out the back. But in that intake, you hiding in there. It's really kind of hard to see. Maybe this angle will show it. It's, I'll, it's I'll get on it. the video. It's hard. He'll get it's, some pictures out there for there, you. There's and some other pictures videos. on our Instagram, but yeah. the ESC is there, which is nice because it's right in front of the fan through that inlet valve and all that nice cool air is going to be blowing over it, keeping it nice and cool. Nice. So that'll be great. Um, but what I have left and the servos are mounted in place. Yeah, I saw that. I'm going to, oh, I won't be able to redo the wires. I wanted to redo the servo extension wires because the wires on the servos weren't long enough. So, you, so I added extensions. But they were longer than But what they're you longer needed. than what I needed, so they're kind of bundled up with a zip tie, and I don't like it. But maybe I'll just cut those ones short and go with that. Hmm. We'll see. Um, so, But the next thing I need to do is add the decals, because that's the next step in the instructions, and then I put on the tailorons. So it runs like a – it controls like a flying wing. So okay. there are two control surfaces that operate independently of each other, uh -huh. but also at t to perform aileron functions like rolling. And then they'll work together like elevators to go up and down. So there is no rudder on this. It is what you would, you control it in a form you call bank and yank. <laughs> that sounds, that sounds <laughs> yeah. more dangerous than, than I think I want, but you know, yeah. so I, I, I can't wait to. So you roll it over it and you just pull back on the stick and that's how you turn. But it's supposed to fly super fast. Like yeah. in the instruction, it says this is not a slow flying plane. 
This is flown best at high speeds with gentle controls. <laughs> I am so scared. You may not have enough room at our local park. I think I will barely have enough room. Yeah. But I'm, if Maybe. not... If well, not, if you might have to go into the elementary school that's right next I door. I think so. I'm, I'm thinking just to get away from cell towers and stuff, because there's two right here. Yeah. And this is going to be flying a bit of a distance. I think we'll have to go up to the Salt Lake Model Airport. Yeah, probably. I, I mean, I think you could test it at the park, but yeah. I, I don't know. It, you have to make sure that like there, nobody's there because you're going to be using the whole park. Oh, yeah. I'll be using the whole space. Yeah. But so I've got that. And hang on. Those are my next steps to get the decals on and the rest of the control surfaces in. But it was interesting setting this up. The way it's designed in the instructions, they say, depending on your battery weight, that's where you put the ducted fan unit. So I had to weigh my battery. It turned out to be 151 grams. And in the instructions, it says if your battery is 150 to 172 grams, they tell you measure this far back from this line and that's where you put the leading edge, the front of your ducted fan. Wow. And then there's... But, and it has a place for you to put your battery, too. Like, uh -huh. where, where you yeah. put your battery in in, in... in the canopy here, underneath the canopy, that's where my battery goes. And there's plenty of room for me to slide it forward and backwards to make sure the CG is correct. But just initially, it says, if your battery weighs this much, put your bet, put your EDF here. Oh. I, I, I It's really interesting. I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited, too. And absolutely terrified, but it's going to be awesome and loud. Oh, how loud do you think it's going to be? I mean, that it should have, it should like, should spin up and. I test spun it up the other night. It's oh, it's it very loud? loud. It's a good thing you won't be right next it, to it, it when you're flying. Like it sounds like an angry bee. So it's like, like my like my DJI. Yeah, take that sound. Yeah. Amplify it by like twenty decibels. Probably not 20 because... I know. Decibels are exponential, yeah. but still. <laughs> Probably it's like five decibels. <laughs> maybe 10. <laughs> That's a lot still. I though. know. That it's is loud. Lot. It is so loud. That is crazy. But so, I, I I can't wait to get It get looks that out awesome. There. It's huge. The wingspan is 26, 25 inches. So not super big on the wingspan. It's longer than it is wide. Uh -huh. um, like, like you said, it's a flying wing. It's like a... It's, it's a rocket. But, yeah, so um, everything's put together with epoxy. I epoxied the wings on because they weren't originally on. I glued them on. But, yeah, the last thing I need to do is just get the decals, vertical stabilizer, and the tailorons. I also, oh, so real quick, one interesting thing about this, a lot of people where the tailorons mount on are these weak, these little tabs of EPO foam. Uh-huh. And that tends to be where people, they break on people first. Okay. So the makers of this plane put out a document for a reinforcement mod where you cut out of 16-inch balsa or ply, hobby-grade plywood or whatever these shapes, and you glue them on over and around those tailor-on supports. It doesn't look like you've done that. No, because I'm using carbon fiber. Oh. I got a sheet of one mil carbon fiber, and I've got my scroll saw in the garage that I need blades for. Once I get blades, I'll cut those all out, and then I'll glue those on. That's that. That'll be so. It'll there. It'll be super light. It shouldn't affect my CG much at all. Um, that'll be very, very, very. But cool. it'll add a nice little hint of carbon fiber and some good structural rigidity and reinforcement. Yeah, and make for an awesome looking and flying airplane. I hope. But yeah, I'm I'm absolutely terrified to fly this. All right. It may not survive very long. But it'll be awesome, and there will be video of it. So there you go. That is that is my project updates. I don't think I have anything else right now. Cool. So, All right. So beginner tips that you've uh, that you've got here. Let me re re drink my water. Yeah, that's it's good to stay hydrated. Yeah, well, this is the most talking I've done all day, so my voice is getting tired. <laughs> if you go back and listening, I sounded better when we started, and now I sound kind of hoarse. <laughs> all right. So check and double-check your fits. So when you're doing a build like my EF-16, before any glue went on, I checked to make sure I knew how it was going to fit together, how it was going to look, made sure that I knew how I was going to hold it while it dried because it's five-minute epoxy. I need to... Smear it on there and then wait. 
yeah. and hold it in position so it doesn't move. So make sure, and this also like applies to when you were doing your elf. Yep. And your your first ser- set of servos you wanted to put in, way too big. Yes. Yeah. So, But I checked the fit, and I didn't glue them in. I taped them in. Exactly. So check fact, your fits. Even the even the servos I ended up using, I flew it with only tape the first couple times. Yeah. Because I, I wanted to make sure it was good. Then we hot glued them. Yeah. And hot glue is still only semi-permanent. So yeah, exactly. Uh, so check, double check, recheck. Always make sure everything fits like it should. So that is my first beginner tip. Um, and especially for... Wood models, balsa. I'm, I have a Chaos. It's called the Chaos Wing Kit. It's a small 22-inch flying wing that I'm in the middle of building. Haven't touched for a while. Um, but especially when you're doing stuff like that, yeah, make sure that everything fits properly, that it's going to come out looking the way you want before you put any glue in place. Yeah. And that was one thing uh, when, I was, when I was repairing the Elf. Yeah. I checked the fit. I checked it a bunch of times, made sure it was nice and tight, but loose enough that it fit in, tight enough that it wouldn't just fall out if I tipped it over. Yeah. Like it was like there was a lot long and I, I long before I ever put glue in there. Yeah. And then I made sure that I had it lined up right and everything. So yes, checking the fit whether you're repairing or Building. putting together new. Yeah. Taking your time will make for a better end product. Then just just yeah, slapping it together, throwing it together. That's how you cause problems. That's how you go back and look at it and go, ah, oh, dang. Yeah. And that's how you spend a lot of money. And that's how you tank something into the ground immediately and wonder, where did it go wrong? Oh, the tail was crazy upside down. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So check your fits, double check your fits. Then put so like like you do when you're cutting something for like building with woodwork yeah. or carpentry or whatever. Measure, measure twice. twice, cut once. Yeah, yep. exactly. So there's that. Um, and then also in building stuff like for the CF16, read ahead in the instructions. Yeah, see what's coming up. Exactly. That, that is like when we put the Robo Masters together. Yeah. Um, like I. It was very good instructions, but we I would read a couple pages ahead because uh, while we were we were working on a part, and then I'd look ahead and we'd work on part, work look ahead, mm-hmm. uh, very much. And the second time we put it together, the second one because I got two of those, uh, the second one we put together went a lot smoother because <laughs> I'd already put one together, and it's probably put together a lot cleaner. I don't know if it's any cleaner. They they they're. The, those instructions were really good, yeah. but um, I, I agree with you. Like reading ahead on the instructions, that is a great one, especially when you're putting kits together. Yeah, because the kits are going to tell you one way to put it together, and it's a good way to put it together. But maybe the nice thing about building these things is you can use your engineering mind and make tweaks and adjustments and do it how you want to do it Yeah, and how you think is better. So like the EF-16, it gave me instructions on how to properly lay things out. And I followed them for the most part, but there were a couple points where I'm like, I'm going to jump ahead here or backtrack here just so I can make sure this fits right. Like my servo extensions, I got those put in place and put together sooner than the instructions and like hooked up to my radio sooner than the instructions would normally say to. Mm Mm-hmm. But I wanted to make sure that everything fit right before I glued on the bottom of, and didn't have access anymore. And didn't have access like I am now in the position of. Yeah, because now in, in order for you to replace those, you have to do a major, a lot more yeah. overhauling. Well, now, thankfully, it does one you nice thing. You have a little access. Little. Little. But one nice thing about the the instructions and how they told you tell you to build this thing is, so the fuselage is two parts, the upper fuselage and the lower fuselage. And the lower fuselage is only tacked on with a, cu- a few drops of five-minute epoxy. Yeah, in only a couple places, right? Yeah. So I could break it free. Well, that's what and I think. And not super damage I, it. I, yeah, but you still have to actually cut those marks. Yeah, I still have to break it yeah. a little bit. But and it's so, possible. But that's, again, looking ahead because if you're like, oh, this just glues on, you might just think glue the whole thing because yeah. you're trying to get ahead of yourself. Again, going slow. And reading ahead. Or you might glue it on before you're ready to. Like you haven't oh. made proper connections yes. along the way. That, that's the other part. So, so I like that. That's a good beginner tip. Always like 
even simple, almost ready to flies or where you just have to put a couple things together, read through the instructions all the way I like to do to, so I know the path I'm going to follow. And then as I'm going through, read the steps and a little bit ahead so I can just kind of stay on top yep. of the build. So those are my those are my beginner tips. What about you? So uh, one thing is um, when I was doing, I was getting the latest update for my Tyrannus. Mm. I thought I had, I thought I was doing something wrong. Okay. Come to find out the USB cable I had was not, it was like only a power source. So it wasn't getting me the connection that I needed. Uh, there was something wrong with the USB cable. There was no data transmission. Yeah. It was like, it, it was reading part of the data, but not all of the data. So oh. how, like, cause there are some USB cables that are just power cables basically. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. And that's what this one was. I think. Because it would it would charge it, but it wasn't Wouldn't. giving me the data communication that I needed, um, and I was freaking out. I'm like, "What is wrong with my?" <laughs> and then finally, I I'm like, "Well, let's try a different USB because my transmitter, brand new, it can't be broken. Shouldn't be broken. And it wasn't. Thank God. USB cable. So make sure that the USB cable that you have is not just a power one and that it's a full blown and check it. Make sure like you that. Like that sounds really simple, but that like I, I played with that for like 30 minutes and I was getting all kinds of I was doing weird things on my transmitter <laughs> and all kinds of things thinking something was broken on it. And I swap out the cable and, and everything started working. Nice. So uh, that 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 is checking your cables, making sure you've got the right cable for what you're doing with whatever it is. Yeah. And this, this one was specifically USB. And it was a USB mini, so the old s small square ones. Anyway, because mm, yeah. um, that's what the Tyrannus uses for communication with uh, your computer and stuff like that and for charging. Yeah. Um, but uh, so just make sure those are good. Then the other one, this is when you're out flying. Yeah. <sighs> like, listen, feel, look at. Like, I, I can't, I'm not sure what's the right adjective here. No. But like fill the attention. wind <laughs> pay attention to what the wind is actually doing yeah. and what your flyer when you're flying what your flyer is doing in the wind because i sheared my servos as i said earlier on and i know and i think it was just it was a combination of a overcorrection with the wind shear that i hit mm. i think i just got a gust of wind and i overcorrected or undercorrected i'm not sure and it just slammed it i mean, like it it slammed it to the ground Ouch. hard yeah super I saw, hard i saw the aftermath it's pretty sad yeah like it destroyed like it popped off both servos it destroyed the one servo mm. it damaged the tail wing the the fin connector the fin slot and uh but my nose piece did not break <laughs> <laughs> that is the key that thing is never gonna break well uh, so talking about the wind for a second when you're flying any winged aircraft any fixed wing aircraft you always take off into the wind yeah because when it comes to flying ground speed isn't what keeps you in the air nope wind speed is yeah because the wind over your wings is what keeps you moving. So when you're flying into the wind, your ground speed is going to actually be really slow. Yep. When you're flying with the wind, your ground speed is going to be screaming. Yeah. Because the wind is pushing you and you're trying to keep on top of it so you actually have wind speed going over your and wings. And that is exactly what happened. Yeah. I had, I, was, I had got turned going in with the wind. And when I turned back around, that's when I think I hit the gust and just... Just caught you. Right to the ground. Yeah. Uh, and that's the thing with the gliders that I love. Like, that was one of my favorite things is just – it's just sitting there. It's just sitting in the air, just wobble a little bit, and just just sits there. It's so <laughs> awesome. Like, you're just like – just minor touches here and there, and it's just – it's just it's not going anywhere. It's not going forward. It's not going backwards. It's not doing it. It's just sitting in the air. Like, it's just – just magically sitting in the air. It's yeah. so awesome. Well, and if you if you have enough wind and you get your speeds right, you can fly backwards. <laughs> I, it's terrifying, but I, you can do it. I, with that elf, I was doing some really cool things. Yeah. Like I could get it up, nose up, where it's 100% vertical, and mm -hmm. fly it backwards. On its tail. On its tail, and then flip it back up. Oh, gosh. It was so, f like, 
those are some things that I was doing because I would get it up there. It would sit up there. I'd, I'd shoot it up. It would then – and I'd tilt it backwards so the nose – was its nose was up but leaning back and the tail was forward basically mm-hmm. but still in a vertical position and then it would pop up and just as it would like change vertical I'd flip it back down and it would just bounce right back up on top of the air <laughs> I did nice. that a couple times I still was only getting 25 seconds in the air so this was all happening pretty quickly 25 is pretty good though yeah I the day I crashed it uh, m- my average time was like 25 seconds yeah because so. like these these small gliders, I think the highest I've gotten mine on a launch is maybe fifty feet in the air. Uh, yeah, you had some. Re- I've seen you have some really good launches. You might be pushing sixty feet. Maybe. Maybe. That's a hard maybe. Yeah, but these, these gliders are so light. Yeah, they're a hundred and something grams. Yeah, most of mine. There's not I was, a lot of mass to take them up there. Exactly. Most of mine was I was sitting um, twenty five feet, maybe thirty feet tops. Yeah. Um, even when the, the day when I because I'd flown mm-hmm. up at the point of the mountain, gotten a little more comfortable with it, then flown, and yeah, it was I was maybe thirty feet tops, and it just it was it was fun, but yeah. So yeah, there you the go. Wind. The wind. The wind is. The <laughs> it's wind your is friend. It is your friend. When and it's your when enemy. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> so you've right. got up here. So I found some new events. Yep. So let's cover those real quick before we wrap it up. Yep. So Horizon Hobby is having an RC Fest, which sounds super awesome. It's October 2nd and 3rd out at Eli Field in Monticello, Illinois. Okay. So if you're local or you want to travel out to Illinois, um, you can find all the information at the, on the Horizon Hobby website. Just look up the RC Fest. Um, it looks, from what I can tell, to be all things RC. So planes, quads, boats, trucks, cars. Awesome. Everything. Just going to be a huge bonanza. Um, Axial, or they actually, Horizon just finished up an event that they do with Axial called the Axial Badlands event, where it's all rock crawlers. Ooh, I've watched some of those rock callers and those, some of those are those pretty are fun. Those are pretty cool. Yeah. So the Hobby RC Ho- Horizon Hobby RC Fest is coming up October 2nd and 3rd. Um, we'll post links to all these events as always in our in the descriptions and stuff so that you guys can go straight to where we found them and get all the information. Yep. So the next one you've got on here is uh, August 9th through the 13th, Multi GP Virtual Open. Yes. And you go to uh, multigp.com and look up for the uh, multi-GP virtual open. Search so, for that. This is cool. This is not a on-location event. This is a virtual fly-in using Velocidrone. It is, a, I don't know much of the details. I just found it this morning. Okay. Um, but you register as a drone pilot. You use Velocidrone and you sign in and you run multi GP races. So, like real quadcopter races. And they have classes for professionals all the way down to brand new rookies. Huh. And various size classes and everything. So, will you run a course and then will it be time or will uh-huh. it be. It'll um, be like a regular quadcopter race, but it'll all be in Velocidrone. That actually sounds like something I'm going to look into. So, Velocidrone, it's a pretty cheap. Um, drone simulator, I think it's 25 ish bucks. I'll look it up. We'll post a link to it as well. Um, but yeah, they have that going on. Um, they're still very bare bones on the information. So you'll have to go to the link that we share to get more information about it. Cool. But that is coming up. Should be super cool. Um, and then another virtual fly-in that's coming up. Um, this one is hosted by real flight and RC groups. So a little while ago they're, in the summer, there's a huge RC event, RC event slash full scale airplane event called Joe Nall. Okay. Huge, huge event. People come from everywhere to go to this thing. Well, that got canceled this year because you know yeah. reasons. So they did a virtual Joe Nall, and they had ex- exhibitors come, and everyone like you logged into RC or Real Flight into a special multiplayer room they had set up. And they had mapped it out just like the original, like the real Jonal Field and everything, lakes and everything. Oh, whoa! And you can explore it in virtual reality. That's cool. And fly around. So there's that. But they're doing it again. They're doing another real flight RC groups virtual fly-in. 
Um, hang on, what's this one called? So we'll post a link to it, but it's um, there's no real set days yet because I it's. I was gonna say there's. Uh, I'd have to go into the link, but it's so just real they, flight and yeah. So team up in for, real yeah. flight, you go into multiplayer mode. There's a special room set up for this. For this, you right. just log in and you can go fly. It's a supposed to be a huge fly in. You don't. There's no fees. No AMA insurance because you know it's you're on not, your computer. You're not, yeah, you're not. Like, so long as you, you behave. If you crash into something, it's, it's not gonna cost no. thousands of dollars. Exactly. So <laughs> that's gonna be super fun. I'm Virtually, try, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go to. I'm gonna try to go um, participate in that once I find out like one of the main days they're doing stuff, and I might stream it on our YouTube. That'd be cool. But that's coming up. That should be super fun. So if you have real flight. 7.5, 8, or 9, you should be good to get in there. All three of those versions work well together. Um, so they're we'll, obviously going to be running it with 9, but you should be good. So we'll put we'll put some of the, uh, this stuff in the description. Um, so check those out. So you'll, um, you'll be able to see those. Yes. All uh, updates on other events. Um, most of them are still good. I, there was one, I think it was Best. The best electrics of South Texas. Did they cancel? No, they're still looking for a location. Oh, they're looking for a location. Okay. They're, they've the they had the Lee from RC Roundtable, who's kind of taking it over or spearheading it. He thought he had a good location, but it didn't end up working out. So they're still looking. The couple options that they do have right now are a little far out. So. But, so we'll keep you posted. Yeah, and if you guys have any events that you're aware of in your local area, uh, and you want us to, you want us yes. to share it here. Go ahead and email us out rclawnchairpilots at gmail. At, yep, at gmail dot com. Yep, and we will. We'll put it up. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about them, we'll or we'll, we'll, we'll let you. We'll let people know. All but six you, of you. Give us, give us some time so we can record it because we're only doing this every other week. Yeah, so, we record the weekend before we put it out for yeah. you guys. So. Yeah. So, so give us a little bit of heads that. Up. Uh, so we have a little bit of time, but we'd be happy to advertise it for you. Or if you're, if you are putting up an event, um, I mean, right now we're just starting out, but let us know, and we will definitely share with those who are listening to us yep. and and watching us. Um, do we awesome. have anything else? I don't think so. I think that's it. Okay, so uh, I'm going to say it. I'm okay, gonna do, I'm you gonna do it. it. You do so it. So remember, when flying inverted, up is down, and down is expensive. RPM is how hard you hit the ground, and torque is how far you have to dig to get it out. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks for coming, guys. Bye.